because you're laughing already. I didn't even. <laughs> I love it. Um, uh, welcome to Ask Authors Anything, the YA Q and A series devoted to famous writers, favorite books, and fangirling. Yay! Um, I'm Megan McCafferty, and um, you don't really need to know anything more about me than um, that I love reading, I love writing, and I love talking about books. And that is why I'm the host of this new show. Um, if you're watching, I guess it's safe to assume that you also enjoy doing at least one of those three things. Um, if you don't, then you're in the wrong place. And <laughs> You would be better off watching sale blog compilations on YouTube instead. Um, so um, I'm hoping that I don't make my own contributions to the sale blog today. Um, I've never done anything like this before. Um, but I'm confident that my fantastic first guest and my enthusiastic, inquisitive co hosts will help keep my sale blog material to a minimum. So before I get any chance to mess things up, um, I want to welcome the first guest to ask authors anything. The number one. All right, see, look, I did number one, and I made two, and I put two fingers up. Look, I made a two <laughs> instead of a one. See, don't be afraid to mess up, ladies. Anyway, number one, New York Times best-selling author of eleven novels. Oh, eleven! No, oh, that works. <laughs> Look, I turned it around, everybody. I turned my mistake into a positive. Um, all right, let's get serious. This is important. Okay, number one New York Times best-selling author of eleven novels, including my favorites: Just Listen, Lock and Key, Along for the Ride, and most recently, The Moon and More. Sarah Dessen. <laughs> And as you can see, I am joined by my co-hosts today, students from the Ann Richards School for Young Women Leaders in Austin, Texas. <laughs> and you'll all have your opportunity to ask uh, Sarah questions, but you're going to just have to let me fangirl a little bit first. Um, so Sarah, <laughs> thank you so much for enthusiastically agreeing to do this thing before it even had a name. Right. Um, of course. I don't know if you remember this, but you were actually the first writer to contribute a short story to the anthology that I edited ten years yes. ago. Yes. You were the first one. Um, so you're game. You <laughs> I love that about you. Well, thank you, and thank you for asking me to be part of this because it's really fun. And I, I like I said, I've I've been into this school before where these girls are, and it's a great school, and there's such voracious readers there. So I can't think of a better thing to be doing on a Monday. Seriously. Yay. Oh, I can think of a few. But we'll, we'll, we're going to get to the exciting things that you've been doing in your life. We'll um, but you have an incredible way of connecting with readers, both on and off the page, in a large part because you are such a enthusiastic super fan yourself and um, this is sort of kind of this is a, a sort of a meta question considering in the context of a Q&A that's going to be blasted on the internet but I, sometimes I, I'm curious how you strike the balance between being true to yourself and having a real life but at the same time not oversharing not just on social media but also in your in your work because I think you do such a beautiful job at it and an, and an enviable job and I'm just wondering what your line is and how you determine how much to share and how much to keep to yourself. Well I think with writing it's easier because honestly I'm not very interesting so when I'm writing my books it's more fun to make stuff up and to write about other people always you know if you were actually reading about me you would be bored by page four because really I'm not very interesting that's why on Twitter I seem interesting because it's only like 140 characters at a time but you know um, I think with social media in a little ways it's harder I keep my writing life more private and that is a choice um, I don't you and I have both had struggles we've bumped into each other over the years where we've been sort of tearing our hair out over one book or another and um I find I don't want to talk about my writing process too much, you know, and I don't, it's almost like I don't want to jinx it. I don't want to, if it's going well, I just don't want to talk about it. So right. I, 
I, I think that is my more private part, actually. Like, I can talk about on social media my chickens and my daughter and my obsession with Good Morning America, and that all seems a little bit safer and easier than actually delving really deep into the writing, you know, on a regular basis and talking about that. But it's so authentically you. Like, that's a, like, I mean, we first bonded over our mutual love for Barry Manilow. Yes, this is true. <laughs> and I'm not going to put you on the spot. And trying to talk to you into a little Barry okay right now, unless you want to. Unless you I'm want not to sing that like little... you may. No, nobody wants to hear me sing. Um, I don't um, have, but thank but, you. But anybody who, who has read your blog or follows you on Twitter knows that you are passionate about like, your chickens. And I, I do have to bring it up your Tar Heels, which I, I, I'm so sorry for your loss. I know. I know. And I really appreciate you still coming on the show. I know. <laughs> My team lost last night, but since everybody's team seems to be losing, in this bracket, it's okay, you know. But yes, that was that was a little heartbreaking. But that's just part of the ride, you know. And now we look forward to summer. So it's truly March madness, isn't it? Um, but on a happier note, you most recently won a fan contest to attend the premiere of the Veronica Mars movie. And I know a lot of the Ann Richards girls want to know about this, as well as lots of people on Twitter and Facebook and Tumblr. <laughs> I also know we could probably spend a half an hour just talking about this alone. Right, I know. So, so let's just get, we're going to get it out of the way with a simple yes or no question. Okay. Yes or no, Logan is as adorable in real life as he is on screen. Yes or no? Yes. yes. There you go. All right. Actually, so there you go. Um, actually, if you want to hear more about Sarah's night at the premiere, she wrote a highly entertaining blog post on sarahdesson.com, and it, it's like a minute-by-minute -minute recap of the whole night, and it's really funny. It's a little obsessive. It was fun. <laughs> oh, and your dress was fantastic, by the way. Oh, thank you. Um, well, as I said, we have many great questions from fans, um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Nikki from the Ann Richards School ask the first and I think most fundamental question of all. Okay, so my question is, what or who inspired you to become a writer? Oh, that's that's a really good question. Um, well, I always, I'd have to say my mom, in a lot of ways, inspired me. My mom was not a writer. She's an academic writer. Um, my mom and my, my parents are both professors. But my mom always encouraged me to read as much as I could get my hands on. She was always getting me books that were a little bit beyond what I was reading so that I had to, like, come to her and ask questions about them. And she just really believed in me, I think. Both of my parents did. Um, a lot of people, I, you know, I was not a very good student in high school, and I went to college and kind of burnt, went down in flames at my first college and, and had to leave early and had all these problems. And a lot of other parents would have given up, I think, <laughs> or at least lowered their expectations drastically. You know, but they always believed in me, and they, they, they knew that I loved to write, and they steered me towards creative writing classes here at UNC Chapel Hill. And I walked into my first writing class with a woman named Doris Betts, and she started talking, and I thought, for the first time in my life, I just knew. I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to do what she's doing. I want to be a writer. I want to teach writing. I want to talk about writing every day. Um, and so that was it. So I came to my realization of, like, what I really wanted to do a little bit later, maybe, than some people do, but earlier than others. Um, but it was mostly just the love of reading. I mean, I finished a book. And if it was a really good book, I know you guys know this feeling, like you want it to keep going, you want more. That's why we like series books so much, you know, it's like you don't want it to end. And if I would start writing my version of what happened next or whatever, and that's really where it all started for me. I just wanted the stories to keep going. And um, if nobody else could do that, then I, I had to figure out a way how to do it myself. I, I believe that all writers start out as passionate readers. Yes. I, I, I think you can't be a writer without being a reader first. No. Um, and Elena, you had an interesting question because Sarah was talking about books and the impact that books had it have had on her um, on her writing. I'd like I'd like you to ask your question, Elena. Hi. So my question is, what book do you wish you had thought of and written yourself? Do I do what books do I wish I had written myself? Yeah. yeah. Oh wow, that is a good question. <laughs> um, Wow. Well, you know, one of my favorite books, I have a terrible time picking favorite, one favorite of anything, but one of my favorite books of all time is To Kill a Mockingbird. And I think everybody wishes that they could have written that book because in my mind it's the perfect book. It was so perfect that Harper Lee just never felt like she had to publish another book. It was like, she dropped the mic. That was it. She was whatever done. I do next will never be this good, so I'm done. You know, and you got to appreciate that kind of thing. 
Um, so that would probably be my first pick. Um, and more modernly, you know, there, there are lots of books that I read. I just finished reading a book by Donna Tartt called The Goldfinch, which oh. I sort of put down and just went, woo! You know, like, just an amazing, amazing book. Um, but I would say To Kill a Mockingbird, and, um, you know, I wouldn't have mind written, writing The Fault in Our Stars, I have to say. <laughs> The movie looks so good. Would love to be able to say that was my book, but I do love John Green, so I'm, you know, I'm happy for him. But you know, I, I think he would he'd understand why I would want to take his book if I could. Um, well, you know, we're happy that you've written the books that you've written. So, <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, you've hit so many career milestones. I mean, uh, number one, New York Times. <laughs> number one. That's my official. That's gonna be my official <laughs> new sign. Um. <laughs> Number one New York Times bestseller. Um, a movie was made out of your books. I actually have the How to oh, Deal movie. There it is. In, which, as an aside, I listened to your podcast with Sarah Zar, this creative life, where you discuss this haircut and how this right. haircut that Mandy Moore has in this movie is the type of haircut that everybody thinks they can pull off. Right. <laughs> so you get it, and you're like, no, my head's weird. I yeah. Not a good Sack doesn't work for me. No. Anyway, but uh, so you had a movie made out of your books, and um, you've won awards from uh, the New York Public Library and American Library Association and the Los Angeles Times, and so many writers have come and gone, and you're still here, and you're still thriving and awesome, and <laughs> you were writing at YA at a time where very few people were doing what you what you do, right. um, yeah. and so Dennis from Ann Richards School, um, had like to hear more about how you chose that career path. Dennis, you want to ask your question? Um, so I'm Ruby. I'm representing Denise today. Oh, Denise. I'm sorry, Den I had Dennis. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you, Ruby, for representing Denise. <laughs> yeah. um, she wanted to ask, what was your reasoning behind writing stories for mainly teens? So why YA? Why YA? Um, well, really, I sort of fell into it backwards. I think, like Megan was saying, when I was first writing YA, it was a very small, it was really, there, was, there wasn't even, there was like children's books, you know? So like my books, when they first came out in 96, which don't even tell me because I know a lot of y'all weren't even born then, probably, um, were, were like shelved in the bookstore and in the library next to the board books and stuff. You know, they just, YA was so different then. It was smaller. There just weren't as many things happening. But really the way that I ended up in it is I just had a lot of stories about high school. And I hated high school. So I got through high school and then I was like, I never want to think about high school again. I remember sitting at graduation with all these people around me that were already all nostalgic for the high school experience and they all had their little pom-poms and, oh, it's so sad. And I was like, get me out of here. I hate all of you. <laughs> I never want to think about any of you ever, ever again. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, I have to say, that surprises me because you just tweeted yesterday about having brunch with your friends from high school. And I was well, feeling funny about my friends. I was <laughs> like, oh, friends from high school that she likes because I, I truly hated everybody from high school. No, I didn't. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I didn't hate anybody. <laughs> I, my friends weren't with me at that moment, you know. You know, you have to sit alphabetically. You don't get to. <laughs> so I was just like, get me out of here. And then I got to college, and I started taking this writing class I mentioned earlier. And um, and I tried to write what everybody else was writing, which you know, a lot of times when people get to college, they they write very deep, dark, serious, because you're not in the public school system anymore, so you can write whatever you want. So people write about sex, and people write about lots of cigarette smoking, or whatever, you know, <laughs> stupid stuff, because you just can, you know, there's like a freedom to it. So I tried to do that, and all my stories were terrible, and then I wrote a story about the prom, and everybody was like, this is great, and I was like, no, I don't want to write that kind of story, ah, no, why, why won't you take my serious, like, dark, depressing stuff, my bleak stuff, you know, and they didn't like it, um, and so it really kind of chose me. I realized that as much as I disliked high school and thought I had nothing to say, and didn't want to think about it, so much had actually happened, which is why it was so hard for me, I think. And and I, I think I'm still writing my way out of it. You know, I think on every page, it's very easy for me to put myself back in that mindset um, and remember what I felt like. And as a writer, I think when you hit your strength and you, you realize what's in your wheelhouse, what it is that you're good at, you're a fool not to follow that, you know? Um, nobody wanted my bleak novel about a girl staring out the window and drinking coffee. Like, that's not interesting. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> but people didn't want to hear about the prom. So, um, and it, I, it's been the best possible place for me. I, I cannot imagine a better place. So it just shows what I know. <laughs> I, I had a very similar trajectory in that I went through like my dark, like Sylvia Plath poetry phase, and exactly. I thought that was, <laughs> that's what I thought a writer had to be. Like, just, oh. and I definitely had that side to me, but like I, I didn't appreciate that. Like, I. I like humor. Like I am. You I mean you guys have gotten to know me? I'm a little goofy. Like, and I would <laughs> try to suppress that because I thought that that's what being a serious writer meant. And I went through the same experience where, like, you know, I tried these deep, dark stories, and then the one I wrote about working on the boardwalk as a teenager was the one that resonated with right. people. And it's just, it is funny. It's like it chooses you. And I would say that anybody who's interested in writing, you kind of like. Go with your natural voice and go with the stories that you want to tell and not try to follow what's popular or what people think is um, um, the, the type of story to write and how. And so, yeah, I, mean, I recently had somebody a couple of years ago say to me at some book event, like, I love your books, but they just need vampires. And uh, I was like, you know, I, I wouldn't know what to do with a vampire in my book. They would just be like anybody else. They'd be like eating a sandwich and talking about music. You know, it just it wouldn't have it would be there'd be the point in having them there. <laughs> so it's just like and everybody would know that I was just trying to jump onto some trend that doesn't suit me at all. So I was like, Thank you very much, but I'm fine with other vampires. But I appreciate the compliment because I think that's what that was. I don't know. This ties into a question that we got um, on Facebook. Uh, Chanel on Facebook asked what type of character or story would you like to explore that you haven't written about before? Like, would, for example, would you ever consider writing a teen mystery like Veronica Mars? Oh, goodness. I with another question. Leslie on Tumblr asked, have you ever considered writing a book with a male protagonist or narrator? I have not. I've been asked this question a lot, I think, because I do have... Good, I've had some good boy characters that people like, and so they would, they're would they curious to see what I would do from a... I have no idea what men are thinking, boys are thinking. I mean, that, that was basically all of our high school experience, me and my girlfriends, was us sitting around going, what does that mean when anybody said anything to us? Like, your boyfriend would say something, and we'd all huddle together at lunch. Well, he said this. What does it mean? I don't know. What do you think it means? Like, so I don't know what, I don't know how I could put myself in a boy's head. I just, I, I, I have no idea where, <laughs> that is a strange country that I don't, I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. He looked but, we don't know that much even as we get older, guys. So. Exactly. I mean, I still, I still don't have. My, my husband just said something to me about ten minutes ago, and I was like, "What?" And, you know, and he was already walking away, and I didn't even, I don't even know what he meant. But um, so I think, I think I'd be more likely to try a different genre than changing up the voice. But again, it's kind of going with your strengths. I think writing mysteries is hard. I mean, don't you have to, you have to know your ending and work backwards, which. It's totally against the way that I do it, which is I start at the beginning and write directly all the way through. I don't jump around. I go scene by scene by scene by scene. You know, I think that would be it. Would be really hard to have to know the ending when you started. That's not the way that I work. Actually, that was one of the questions because if you've never written a book, or even if you have written a book like me, <laughs> <laughs> how you actually write a book can seem like such a mystery. Like, how does it happen? And um, so it was, I was curious to hear what your process was like, um, and um, I think Regina, you had a question about the, your the process, how she actually goes about writing a book from start to finish. Um, do you start by planning out how the book is going to go, or do you just start writing and then go from there? Um, I always have like to start with what I call my skeleton. Because I've learned that I need to have some sense of where I'm going. Because it's kind of like when you take a trip. You don't just get in the car and start driving, usually. You know, um, you say, well, I'm going to the beach, or I'm going here, or I'm going there. You know, And then if you see something along the way that's interesting, you'll pull off to check it out. There's like a flea market or a giant ball of twine or whatever it is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I always have, I don't start until I have my first scene, climactic scene, last scene, and the first line. And once I have those things, um, and, the, and the narrator's name is always the first thing that comes to me before anything else. So I can't start until I have her name. And then it, all these little pieces come together, and then I sort of shape them into my skeleton, and that's when I start. And I've tried to do books without that. I just tried to do a book like that, and I set it aside because it was a disaster. 
I thought, oh, I'll figure it out. I'll get it. I'll get it straight. And it just, it never materialized. It was like, it was like driving off into the sunset and just driving forever and never getting anywhere. Um, you need to have some sense of where you're going, or I do. But I like to leave things open. I can't outline, like some people outline their whole book before they start. Yeah. It's really a sense of different, different strokes for different folks, as my mom always says, um, that every writer I know really has a different process. And that's what can be so frustrating about it. If you're just starting out, you've never written a book. Well, how do I do it? There are like a million different ways to do it, and it's really like, again, you have to find out what works for you. I know people who outline. I know people who just write off the top of their head every day, and then everything in between. For me, I've sort of figured out what works for me, but I still have a hard time following my own lead. You know, I just put a book aside, like I said. So um, it's a lot of trial and error. Um, you know, you are really are a master, I feel, of contemporary fiction and real stories about real girls. Um, oh. Annabelle, Auden, Macy, these are characters that even if you can't see yourself in their specific situations, they remind you of somebody that you know well. Um, and so uh, we had a question on Twitter, at Lindsay Henry on Twitter asked, what is your process for character development? In other words, what comes first for you, character or story? It's usually voice, I think. Yeah. You know? It, I mean, it's usually I start hearing a girl in my head talking that's not me, <laughs> you know. Um, but it's all awesome. like if we weren't a writer, that would just be crazy. Yeah, but it's just crazy. crazy. Yeah. Um, I think it's often that's something that that is sort of similar to something that happened to me, but just um, just enough like starts with something that I'm curious about or something that could have happened to me, and then taking it in a different direction. Mm -hmm. And then it's usually just stuff that appeals to me, you know, like. I, you really get ideas from everywhere, like with Auden and Along for the Ride. I remember I saw something on TV, it was probably Good Morning America, about <laughs> adults learning to ride bikes and how it's so much harder to learn to ride a bike as an adult than as a little kid because you know what to be afraid of. And it's a whole different experience. You're higher off the ground, there's more risk, you know what broken bones are actually about, you know, like all these things. And so I just filed that away, like wouldn't that be cool if... You know, there was a character that had never learned to ride a bike and then decided to learn. You know, so it's little things like that. And that's what I call sort of the soup making part of the creative process for me. It's like I'm just filing things away. It's like you're throwing things in a pot and letting it simmer. And then eventually it smells so good that you have to put down everything you're doing and go over and deal with it. Um, but that's, that's sort of how it starts with the characters for me. While we're on the subject of characters, Willa um, has another question about characters that kind of crosses over into a broader inquiry about something all writers at all experience levels can relate to writer's block. Oh dear. Um, so my question was, when you're feeling overwhelmed or struggling to get into a character's mind, what do you usually do? Well, if, if things really aren't working for me, as far as like getting into someone's head, it's not usually that as much as the story has just stalled, which means that I'm not connecting you know, with the character the way that I should be. It usually means that I recently did something that doesn't work, and yeah. it's like fate, or my subconscious is trying to tell me, go back, go back, go back, delete, 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 like you're headed in the wrong, it's kind of like when you play that game when you're a kid, my daughter plays this now where it's like, warm, warm, cold, 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 you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So it's like, when I get stuck, whether it's with a character or a scene or just feeling like I don't want to write, I'm dreading it, you know, it's like, okay, when was the last time I was like, hot, 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 you know, like this is good go back to that last point and see what you changed there. You know, did you bring in a character? Or did you get rid of a character? Did you do some sort of big, you know, 180 turn? Because usually it just means that you were in the groove and now you're out and you have to figure out how to get back to where you were um, for me. And I also find that um, taking a long walk and crying also is helpful for writer's crop. You, know, <laughs> you don't have to walk and cry at the same time, but you can. I have. Um, but sometimes just getting away from your story and letting your brain figure it out. You know, sometimes I'll just go to the grocery store and I, I'll be thinking about what I'm going to make for dinner that night and then it's like, click, oh, there we go. That's what I mean. You know, um, you kind of just have to let it work itself out sometimes. I find, I find that I I solve a lot of my writing problems in, like, the twilight between, like, being asleep and waking up. Right, yeah. Totally out of bed yet and it's just like, I've solved so many problems and it's just, I think it's a matter of just turning off your brain. Like my yeah. brain completely does, well not completely, but almost, I'm not thinking about it and it just yeah. solves itself. I think the more you try to push it, it's like a square peg round hole thing or the more that you, I always say that like my writing life to me is like a clock 
and it keeps good time. I look at it, I know what time it is. But if I go and start trying to take it apart to see how it works and which gear goes where and everything, then it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> it's like, you know, just look at it, trust that it's going to do what it's, it's got a job and it's going to do it and just, you have to trust that. But that's very hard because we're just naturally neurotic as writers. We're crazy. So we're always worried, you know, so it's that, that's a balance. Yeah, we're, we're crazy and we're compulsive liars, which is why we right. write fiction, right? Like, yeah. that's the beauty of writing fiction. It's finding, you know, telling lies uh, and to illuminate a greater truth, right? I yeah, exactly. Um, um, I want to get your name right. Daisia? Daisia? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've honestly only had one sub who got it right. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I should have checked with you. I should have checked first. Um, she has a, a very interesting question about possibly having the opposite problem about maybe being too deep inside the character's mind. Okay. Uh, by the way, it's pronounced Deja. Deja. Uh, <laughs> All right. Thank you. Like Deja Vu, it's it's fine. I got called out. <laughs> um, but I wanted to ask: Do you ever get emotional when writing something that maybe your character has? like deep emotions for because uh, like I've written extensive things and I have to step away from my writing because I'll like sit there I'll be like don't cry don't cry don't cry <laughs> so I was like wondering whether or not a extensive writer because like they set out all of your books on the table over here and some of the books are just kind of like they're at points they're kind of heavy mm -hmm. and so I wondered whether or not you deal with that. Oh, I think definitely. I mean, I don't think you can write from someone's point of view without feeling what they're going through. Um, the biggest experience I had with that is my book Dreamland, which came out actually a long time ago. Um, and it's about a girl who gets into an abusive relationship with a boy. And in order for that story to work, I sort of had to take Caitlin and build her up as a character, and then I had to just break her down to nothing. Um, before I could sort of have her be born again and, 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 you know, heal herself. And that was so hard. I mean, there were definitely days with that book where I knew that I was going to have to have something awful happen to her, you know, and I would just have to write a scene and then go lay down for a few minutes and just breathe and be like, okay, I know she's going to be okay in the end, because that's the nice thing is that their fate is in your hands. Um, so hopefully, and I do like happy endings, you know, I don't believe in total darkness. I don't want to finish a book and walk away being incredibly depressed. That's just not not the kind of reader I am um, or a writer that I am but yeah I mean I, I think that anytime I'm, I'm, I'm writing it and this person is like keeping me company in my head for months you know and, and they become a very much a part of me and like I said I just put, I just put a book aside because it wasn't working but I feel so bad for this narrator of mine this girl that I started to tell her story and I just wasn't able to do it. I feel like I failed her. You know, it's just, just an awful feeling to have. Um, I'm hoping I can work her in somewhere else, as I've done with other characters that didn't, in books that didn't pan out. I often slide them in as, you know, minor characters in later books, so at least they get on they get on the printed page at, at some point, so it's not all lost. <laughs> so our time is we're running short on time. We're almost I can't believe it. I feel like I know, it's an after show. And we've talked a lot about your past, so I just would like to hear a little bit more about your future. Um, uh, MC3319 Hillary on Tumblr, that just flows <laughs> off the tongue, doesn't it? Um, she asks, after 11 novels, where are you looking for inspiration for your next awesome novel? Oh, well, I am writing right now, which is a very early. I know, I know. <laughs> Great, thank God. Um, I, I just started. It's very early days. And um, and again, it's just sort of the things that I haven't written about yet. This one, I can't talk about it because, again, I will jinx right. it in a little clock that won't work anymore. But um, this one very much came out of something sort of similar that happened to me, but I'm able to take it in a different direction. I'm able to delve into it a little bit more deeply. Um, and I'm really excited about it, and I'm happy. You know, and I think it's... Um, Inspiration is everywhere. I think you just have to keep your eyes open. That's, I mean, I, I can, I can get inspiration from staring out my window here. You know, so, so there's, you just, I think as a writer, you're tuned up to eleven, like they say. So, yeah. so it's all out there, and you just have to kind of be paying attention. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that you're writing again. As I'm oh, sure thank you. everybody who's watching is, because we're all awaiting <laughs> your next book. But I also really really respect that you knew when to step away because I think that's a really hard thing and I know that I was 
really inspired by your openness about you know, the challenges of being a writer because like you said we've we've all been there no matter where, where you are um, but we're out of time I, I know I feel like we could talk for I know and uh, what and we we didn't get a time to ask all of your questions I'm sorry and Richard's lady uh, but the good news is that this is only the first episode of Ask Authors Anything and that we will be back next month on Monday, April 21st. I will be talking to an author whose novel inspired me to quit my job to write my first novel. The legendary Lori Paul Anderson. I know! <laughs> Great too. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be at that hangout. I'll tell you. <laughs> it's great. So, Rachel will be there. I'll be there. And Rachel <laughs> will be there. Um, I just want to thank you all for watching. Until then, keep turning the pages or wiping the screen. How, however, <laughs> how, however you read, just keep reading because readers like you are why writers like Sarah and I do what we do. So thank you so thank much you. for coming and hope to see you again. Yeah.